Noah can be the most caring kid, and then he flips. He's scratched me, he's hit me, he's bit me. Do you understand when you bite that that hurts? Look at Noah, see that there's a lot of stuff going on in his brain. But his way of dealing with is hitting. If he's not at school fighting with somebody, he's here fighting with somebody. You're hurting him like that, let go right now. When you ask him, why does he hit, he doesn't know. <laughs> Noah was about three when he was diagnosed with ADHD. We started trying different medications. I was for it, my husband wasn't. Every doctor was about, let's try this medication. Let's try that medication. I said, no, I don't think it's a good idea. We're constantly arguing about who's right. Ethan's emptying out the toy box. You want to go play with him? No! If something out there can help him, then I think we should try. My concern is his long-term effects from a drug that nobody really knows much about. We seriously have tried everything. We want to do what's best for Noah. When he's having his good moments, Noah is the most loving kid in the world. If I could have more of those moments, I'd be happy. I don't know what to do. Currently, two and a half million kids are being medicated for ADHD, and this is a battle you may be fighting in your own home, Ritalin or no Ritalin. But what if I told you a groundbreaking test could actually look inside your child's mind and give you a clear diagnosis? Coming up, the test that is offering new hope in this controversial battle. Noah's ADHD has gotten worse. Noah becomes very, very aggressive, kicking, biting, hitting. We started trying different medications. I was for it. My husband wasn't. We just don't see eye to eye. Henry and Elizabeth are at odds over whether or not they should put their six-year-old son Noah on Ritalin for his ADHD. And so, Elizabeth, you say yes, and Henry, you say no. Why that big divide? Noah is like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, two completely different kids. He's got his really good days, and he's got his horrible, horrible days. And I feel if I can get that loving, caring kid more, then why not do it? I'm tired of him being the troubled child at school. I'm tired of him being singled out by friends because nobody wants to play with him. So I feel if it can help, then I'm for it. And I say no because I'm worried about the long-term effect of, the, of any drugs. You know, I want, I'm worried about him when he's 15 years old. Is he still going to be addicted to this drug? And a lot of these drugs, they don't know. They say it helps now, but what, they don't know what's going to happen in the future. Jim, walk us through ADHD. Uh, well, first, you know, we're talking about uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. We're really talking about a collection of traits that a child has. It's, it's part of their temperament. They're essentially born with it. And there's some positives for ADHD. You know, you're creative. You're spontaneous. You can actually have the ability to hyper-focus on things that you find exciting. You know, there's a lot of uh, great men in history that probably had this, Mozart, uh, Edison, uh, Winston Churchill, but there's some negatives that come along with it. There's the selective attention. That's the biggest part of it. If the child doesn't find it exciting, forget it. They're not going to pay attention to it. We're talking about two areas in the brain, the, the area that uh, is involved with attention and the area that involves with impulse control. Both of those areas are kind of asleep. They're not very aroused. And so he doesn't have the ability to control undesirable behavior, and he doesn't have the ability to pay attention as well as other kids. So he just, the distractions and the daydreaming and the acting out and the getting in trouble, those kind of take over. Which is why Ritalin, which yeah. is a stimulant in many ways, is ironically used to treat a disorder where right. oftentimes kids are out of control. How does a medication that's an upper help control hyperactivity? Oh, yeah. You're already hyper, why are you going to give them a But you're trying to stimulant? activate that part of the brain exactly. that has impulse control. Kind of have, you can, we have a little graphic that you can see. You know, we're talking about the areas of the brain that are underactive. Those are the ones that are going to give him the attention and going to give him the impulse control. So the rest of his brain is kind of taking over with the daydreaming and, and everything else. Then the Ritalin comes in or other medication stimulates it, wakes up those two areas of the brain, which gives him better attention and gives him the better ability to kind of hold back on the undesirable behavior. And that's why I want that for Noah. I do, yeah. because if it can help we him, do. then... Sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> no one's going to argue that yeah. you both want what's best for Noah. Yeah. The reality is not everyone does agree that treating ADHD with medication is a good idea. In fact, at times it can be very controversial. Some even say ADHD is not a real diagnosis. Sometimes it's difficult to make the diagnosis, sure. and that's what I want to talk about next. Mm -hmm. 
because it's not always an easy diagnosis. Sometimes performing tests can help because you do need to rule out biological reasons for ADHD behavior. Dr. Sears actually took Noah for a new high-tech brain imaging test that can help show exactly what's going inside the mind and what treat treatment options may be best for Noah. Take a look. Hey, Dr. Linden. Hey, Dr. How's Dr. Sears, how you doing? Good to see you. Good good to see you. Again. This is Noah. Hey, Noah, give me a high five. How you doing? My biggest problem is doctors start prescribing medications without knowing exactly what's going on in the brain. What we do here at ADD Learning Centers is we provide the most accurate and cutting edge diagnostic tool available. The QEG brain map measures his brain wave. What we want to see is green, that's average. But if I see red here, it's ADHD. We have a chance to turn his life around by giving him the right diagnosis and the right treatment. We're going to get your brain working well so you can do as good as you can. Yes. yes. This testing is definitely giving me hope. This is going to be the light at the end of the tunnel. So Noah, we're, we're putting these wires in your head, we call them electrodes, and they're going to help us measure your brain waves. Look straight ahead. Look at the movie there, okay. What's happening to my brain? I don't think there's going to be one simple answer to Noah's problems. It's going to be a big lifestyle change. Are you ready to put in the work? I'm ready to do whatever it takes to make Noah better. I just want the results, I want them now. This test is going to change our lives. Well, Noah's results are in. Coming up, we'll head into our exam room and reveal whether medication is the answer to Noah's ADHD or if there's another option, find out next. Yeah. I don't want Noah to be medicated because I'm worried about the long-term effects. Stop hitting me. I don't want him to become chemically dependent on medication. Elizabeth and Henry are conflicted over whether to medicate their six-year-old son, Noah, who has been diagnosed with ADHD. Michael Linden is an ADHD expert. He's joining us today. He's pioneering a new state-of-the-art test for ADHD. He actually makes maps of the brain. They're called QEEGs. Michael, thanks for being here. Sure. Before we get into Noah's brain map, can you just, we're gonna show the difference between a, a normal child and a child who has ADHD. Right. The normal brain is on the left, and you see four different circles, and they're green. That means the brain waves are balanced. The brain waves are the activity of your brain. On the right, you see an example of one of four subtypes of ADD. We found out there's four different types. Uh, typically, you see the circle on the top right red if they're more hyper and active, but his, if you look in the bottom right, that's an example of one that's over-focused and anxious, and that's one type that does not respond to Ritalin. Ritalin actually makes you worse because it makes that beta, that circle on the bottom, makes that too high. So your brain's already over-focused and anxious, and it makes you too fast. Can you walk us through what Noah's brain looked like? Sure. This ended up to be one of the most complicated cases I've seen in years. Um, if I can show you on the diagram what we saw initially was number one, if you look at the red, the red is the high areas. Look at the red on the top right circle. That's the ADHD, so that's typical ADHD. But, like I showed you an example earlier, he is red on the bottom right. That's that over-focused, anxious type we see with people that have anxiety, over-focusing, and sometimes Asperger's. But that wasn't it. There was something else that was even more important, and, and thank God we did this test, because we actually found four or five different factors, not just ADHD, but over-focusing and other issues. And this explains why, one of the reasons why the stimulants made him more aggressive, because the stimulants like Ritalin, they make that bottom area worse. They make it higher, and it's already too high. So he needed to go down. He didn't need his brain to be activated. Now, when, now this is a map of Noah's brain waves, but when we actually looked at the readout of his brain waves, we could probably see that next. This is where we saw something very important. Right, we always look at the raw EEG. That's what the neurologists look for. What you want to see on the raw EEG is you want all the brain waves to be flat. Each of those lines is one of 19 channels we look for. Look in the middle, you see all those big spikes? That is abnormal EEG activity. That activity possibly could be a seizure or an abnormal EEG pattern. But what happens when people have that is they don't pay attention for another reason. One of the things I read the teacher said is he had blank staring spells. 
and Ritalin makes this worse also. So there was two reasons why Ritalin was making him worse, and Henry, you got it. You knew that it wasn't helping him, and, and I think you were totally right. And parents usually have that gut where they know if something's helping their kids or not, and we were able to look at his brain and find out why. So if medication isn't the right choice for Noah, what other options are available? The first step, we need, to, he's gonna see a child neurologist. And we contacted one of the best ones in your area, Dr. McIntosh, Andrew McIntosh. I know him personally. He's agreed to see Noah, so that's great. The other Thank thing we're going to recommend, after you get the clearance from the neurologist and work on the behavior at home, we're going to recommend neurotherapy, or EG biofeedback, a treatment we've been doing for 20 years, which takes those imbalances and normalizes them. And the kids do it by playing computer games with their brain. We know lo Noah loves computer games. And by playing computer games like the boy you see, on the right side, he, those, those bars going up and down are his brainwave. So the neurofeedback over time can normalize all those brainwave patterns possibly, help him pay attention, help him be calm, help him not be angry, and possibly help that abnormal EG pattern at the same time. And the greatest thing is it gets lasting results without side effects because it's nothing artificial. This is all amazing. I never even knew there was anything like this out there. So to us as parents, it's it's a relief. It's like a weight off our shoulders. And we're, we're going to be following up, too. And I know Dr. Shears is going to be keeping track of this. Yeah, because we're going to follow this up. When I first met Noah, I, I knew that this wasn't just purely ADHD. That's why I called Dr. Linden, because I knew cause we needed a tool to really look inside, see what was going on, and get to the bottom of this. Well, thank you both. Thank you. Good luck to Noah.